The Vertec HT series cone comes in a carrying case. Here's the cone, uh, an opening in the case for a couple of sleeves, an opening in the case for some tips. You can keep your O-ring kit in here, and you can even carry around a replacement back shell. Today I'm going to show you how to open a cone up and remove and replace the various parts. Holding the cone secure, you can unscrew the tip, that would be this here, and a pore pressure element. Unscrew the tip and pull the sleeve off. And we'll do that, show that on the next step. There's the sleeve coming part way off, there's the tip and the pore pressure element, and here's the o-ring that is visible on the surface and a couple of o-rings underneath on the sleeve area. Once the sleeve itself has been removed, you're looking at our new style sleeve gauging area. It actually entails a sleeve load cell separate from the tip load cell, and it's fully enclosed now for protection from the elements. Previous versions had the strain gauging right on the outside of the mandrel, where it was prone to damage, it was prone to moisture. Uh, this package is, is far more stable and should provide you with much longer life. Inside the bottom of the sleeve there's a retaining ring with two O-rings and we do recommend changing that with every second or third sleeve change. They tend to get a little out of round after hundreds of feet of pushing and if you have any trouble with the sleeve operation always try a new sleeve and a new retaining ring before just assuming the cone itself is bad. Here is the pore pressure element separate from the tip. And a closer shot of the O-rings uh, under the sleeve. And again, this is an X-ring or quad ring, which is on the, shown on the surface of the cone and these two with the sleeve rides on. There is a little bit, let's see if we can get advanced here. There is a little bit of motion in the sleeve that you will feel. The sleeve load cell does move. You can see there's a little uh, gap that can be shown and unshown just by a little motion. That's normal. Now to remove the back shell of the cone, we'll clamp the cone in a vise and we'll clamp it on the back shell itself. Now we have a little tool we use here. You can use the end of a cable and what you need to do is we're going to turn this little Limo connector housing here. We have to turn that off of the cone but we need to hold the limo connector in the end of the cone from twisting during that operation. We've got a little tool you can use or you can use the end of a cable. So you insert the tool or the cable end in and engage it with the limo connector <clears throat> and then you can take your special pliers and turn that limo housing right off. Holding on to the tool or the cable so that the limo itself doesn't turn while you're turning this off. Here is the split rings that actually hold the connector in place and this pressure of having the housing tightened onto the back of the cone actually traps the limo connector in there. That's why we want to hold it when we start to loosen it and when we're tightening it. And here's the back of the unit with the limo housing removed and here is the limo connection which is actually wired right down to the circuit board. So we have been clamped on the back shell to do that and that's what we wanted to do. So now we're going to change our clamp 
and we're going to clamp on the collar. You see, I only want to clamp in this area here. I want to clamp this collar so that I can twist the limo connection off. I'm sorry, twist the back shell housing off. We, we use a spanner wrench to grab the housing itself, a, a, a tool that's fit to that right diameter to avoid any real scratching. And we do have those tools available, and I'm sure you can arrange uh, such tools on, on your end as well. So you get a nice solid grab with that, and again, we are trapped only on the collar. And once you have loosened it with the wrench, then you should be able to hand turn it right off. And you can see that we're hand turning it off and the opening is getting bigger. And once you have it all loosened, you can slide it right off and here is your circuit board with a protective uh, plastic cover over the circuit board to keep the wires tucked into place. Here are the two geophones if you have a seismic cone. <clears throat> These are the two S-wave geophones. If you had a P and an S-wave seismic cone set up, one of them would be pointed vertically here instead of side to side here. When you have your new back shell in hand and you're ready to slide it back on over the cone, <clears throat> it is necessary to guide the limo connector up through the top of the housing. When we do that here, we just take a piece of tubing uh, a foot, foot or two long that'll just fit over the limo connection here so that we can easily guide it right up through the housing. <laughs> See, if you run the tubing right down through, it'll be real easy to guide that back. Get the right picture up here for you. You can see we put the tubing down through the back shell and then we'll put the tubing right over the end of the limo connector. Like this. And then we can slide it right on down. And once we have it all slid down, you can see the, the metal of the limo connection is just coming up through. And we'll take the tubing off and you can see that the connector is indeed fine and hanging up. And once we... Okay. And when we take the tubing off, there's the limo connector. So now we keep an eye on the limo connector while we're turning the back shell onto the cone. And you want to make sure that it is turning freely by hand all the way down to contact. If there's any binding or whatnot, you will gall up and you will need to send a cone in for maintenance because we have had, we frequently have to put those on a lathe and machine the housings off if the threads were not properly monitored during installation. So you should be able to turn hand tight until it's all the way down, just about making contact there. If you can just do it easily by hand, then you will not gall it up and you'll, you'll be okay to take it off again in the future. And we tighten it back down with the same wrench that we had. Then we stand the cone up. You know, put the tip and sleeve back on and stand the cone up so that when you go to put on the snap rings, I'm sorry, the, the split rings, and these are the two split rings right here, you set them up on the cone and the connector is right there. And then you set the limo connection housing down over, just slide it down over and start turning it in. By just, just by finger, make sure it's running and smoothly engaging. And then we take our limo connector holder again and engage it with the connection so that it will not twist when we tighten that housing back in. Again, that's very important to not let those wires twist. And then we, here's the, the, the tool, and like I say, we'll just grab that 
connector with the wrench again. We'll grab onto it and we'll hold here and tighten here and then we're all done. And we have that cone back together. Ready to put the little cap on and put it back in the case.